Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video and welcome back to my M3 to the channel. Now this car has not been on the channel in quite a long time, two months actually, uh, in the time of me recording and uploading this video. There is a reason for that because this car has actually been off the road for exactly that amount of time. Two months this car has been off the road, broken, and I'll be honest, it's partially my fault. I should have listened to you, let me explain. Regular viewers of the channel would of course have seen the last video of this car on the channel and that was when basically, well annoyingly, it was to do with another problem I had with the car. The car had to be recovered, uh, it was completely undrivable due to what actually turned out to be a very simple fix. Uh, the ECU or the DME in BMW terms basically had some water damage. Now it was nothing too serious but basically was due to the drainage channels on either side of the scuttle panel becoming blocked over time due to the car being driven every day and spending a lot of its time under trees. Probably shouldn't park it here for too long. Uh, ultimately resulting in water building up here and then kind of transferring over uh, moisture wise to the DME box, causing it to get a bit confused and flustered and just not starting at all. As you would have seen, therefore, that was fixed. And I picked the car up making that last video, uh, which you saw on the channel. Um, now, while the car was in, and the work was actually done at Regal Autosport, they fixed everything for me um, and brought it back up to life for me to collect. And they did do a health check on the car as per my request to basically see uh, how the car was outside of that problem. And they did diagnose one other problem. In fact, in that video, towards the end, I did in fact say this. Naturally, whilst the car was at Regal, I did get them to do a bit of a health check. And yes, there are some advisories on that health check. Nothing major, little power steering fluid leak. The car had a power steering fluid leak. Here is the reservoir and most commonly uh, the reservoirs actually crack and leak, basically resulting in fluid leaking out over time. Uh, this is what they diagnosed. And I'll be honest, a lot of people in the comments said, you're an idiot. Why are you carrying on driving the car? Why are you not getting it fixed and sorted now? Uh, and there is a reason for it. I was told that it wasn't actually a catastrophic leak. It wasn't anything really to be doing immediately. Yes, get it done in the near future, but you can drive the car um, and you can drive it away. It's just something which you need to uh, maintain, keep on top of, keep on checking the fluid and get it done soon. That of course wasn't documented in the video because I had actually planned to take it back and actually get it all resolved uh, really soon uh, and make a separate video out of it. You know, typical YouTube things. However, upon then driving the car, Home that day, in fact, I did about 100 miles um, after picking up the car and finishing the video, going to see some family and friends, that kind of thing. And in that time, it basically completely drained the power steering fluid, which is not good. And actually, I think myself and the guys at Regal really underestimated the severity of the leak. In fact, the next morning, the reservoir was completely empty after 100 miles of uh, me picking it up. And it is worth noting that they did uh, actually fill up the reservoir because it had uh, depleted slightly when diagnosing the leak. At this point, I spoke to the guys at Regal and we were like, okay, this is much worse than what we thought. This needs to be sorted. And I'll be honest, this car has been uh, having quite a few problems, you know, time after time after time. And at the moment, I'm kind of thinking to myself, this car is costing me a lot of money. I'm just gonna put it aside, forget about it, just park it up and get it sorted uh, when I have more time and money. That now I have done. Unfortunately, it has taken pretty much two months to do so. Um, and there has been reasons for that as well. The car actually ended up needing a new power steering rack. And on these cars, my oh my, minefield, absolute minefield. And you know, I'll be completely honest. Initially, I was like, I want to save money. I don't want to go for a complete new rack, which is actually about 1500 pounds. I didn't want to do that because, you know, I spent so much money on this damn thing. And I had just literally picked the car up from fixing another problem when another one arrives at my doorstep, literally a hundred miles later. And so what I did, I went and looked on eBay. I saw some kind of refurb services that you can do where you can get remanufactured parts, end up spending, I think, 250 pounds on one, ended up being a non M3 rack, even though it was advertised to be compatible for this car. So I went through the hassle of then, you know, trying to fit that, uh, labor charges then adding up. And I was basically finding myself with a car pretty much abandoned, not being used, can't be driven because at this point 
uh, there's no power steering fluid in the reservoir. And every time I even start the car to move it ever so slightly and have to turn the wheel, the pump is screaming its ass off and I don't want the pump to go as well. Luckily, thank God, uh, the pump is actually okay on the car. We have now sorted it and let me explain what I ended up doing. I called up a company called Quarry Motors. Now, I would just like to make it clear, this is not sponsored at all. I think they're like one of the biggest BMW breaker companies in the UK. Um, I have actually bought from them before when I had to buy the LCI center console when I did the LCI um, iDrive update. That is something which I did a while ago. I don't think I actually filmed too much on it. Um, I have bought from them before. Now, Tim from Swift Performance actually pointed me in their direction. Great guy, great company. Thanks again, Tim, for your help <laughs> and answering my late night WhatsApps about what is wrong with my car what i need to do um, he said look on their website if they haven't got it you can request a part on their website there was no uh, steering rack on their website for an e92 m3 so i sent them basically an email saying please have you got an e92 m3 steering rack i know there's nothing on your website but have you had anything just come in and luckily enough they had they had one came off an e92 m3 from 2010 slightly newer than mine i think two years newer than mine but it was an electronic rack it was compatible with right hand drive and everything like that so at this point i had sourced the rack for my car and actually what i may add uh, what was wrong with my initial one was the seals had perished and gone between the steering rack and the steering column i was asking a couple of people like can you buy a seal kit can you avoid having to buy a completely new rack because that's where the leak was coming from had that diagnosed but unfortunately they do not sell a seal kit for an e92 m3 they do for an e46 but that did not help me so that's basically where i came to the conclusion of i need to get a complete new unit what a pain for this steering rack it was a used part obviously um, came off an m3 as i said i paid 670 pounds for this now i thought that was a pretty decent price considering i had a whole ton of quotes uh, initially going to the bottom end of the spectrum which was a complete waste of time as i said paying 250 pounds for a remanufactured one which actually wasn't from an m3 it was not an electronic rack therefore did not fit of course i then wasted time and money uh, finding out that mistake because i obviously had to pay labor charges of getting that fitted all stripped down and everything turned out didn't fit blah 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 um, i also got prices of like two and a half grand one and a half grand 1.4k as well so i did save a pretty uh, big chunk of money and of course there is the labor side of it which again varied got some crazy rates uh, to get that done as well so i was actually very lucky to get it done uh, for under a thousand pounds but i just had to go the long way about it and it was a complete pain in the ass. Now, I appreciate that one, I'm not the best at explaining all this, and this video may seem a little bit all over the place. I am just glad to have the car back. Oh, that is a massive B. Ooh. And I definitely need to make up for lost time. This car is literally about to hit 90,000 miles, and I was actually hoping to do that before I had another problem. But there we are, we live to tell the tale. I do also have some things I wanna run by you as well about the car, the future of the car. So I think, let's hop in, let's get this thing fired up. Hopefully no engine management like when I do start the car up, go for a drive, I can explain more and we can just hear this thing sing once again. For a car that gets driven every day, for it to be out of action for two months, it's a long time and I have really, really missed this car. As I mentioned, we are very close to 90,000 miles, 89,924 to be exact. So right on the brink. Um, and I actually collected the car on 89,800 and something like that. I think I literally did like 115 miles on it, but it's back. I'm really glad, but I'm also a little bit nervous. Like, look, this car, I've done about 25,000 miles in it in my ownership, and it's cost me pretty much exactly what I bought the car uh, just in running it since I've had it, which is absolutely stupid. But getting back in it now, I mean, it's such an incredible car. <laughs> it's just quite possibly the most stupid daily driver you could ever even imagine. 
And I'll be honest, I am at the point where I kind of have two options. Do I stick with it? Keep on <laughs> enjoying that. Or do I cut my losses? Realistically, it's a lot of money I've put into this car. I don't think anything else could go wrong with it. So a part of me is like, enjoy the car as it's driving so good. You've spent all this money on it. What is the point in selling it now that everything is running well? Uh, I'm also not really finished with the car. There's some things which I've always wanted to do to one of these cars, which I think would be a regret of mine if I let the car go before doing that. So I know a lot of you will say, sell it, cut your losses, get rid, it's a skip. Some of you have already said that already, but do I just send it? I've got this car and it would almost be a bit of a waste to just say goodbye to it. One of my previous car regrets was actually selling my Golf R when I did, my Mark 7.5. I ended up buying another one and look what I did to that. So I think it's gotta be done. I've gotta send it but I would like to hear what you guys think. But I tell you what, it's so good to have this car back. Please do not brake again, because I could really do with some trouble-free motoring now for just a little bit, please. It's all fixed. We're all sorted, the car is back on the road. I'm a happy bunny. Um, and I hope you are too to have this car back because it doesn't feature on the channel too much. If I were to send it, what should I do? What should I do this car modifications wise, which you would like to see? I have a couple of ideas and I actually have a couple of things on order already. Um, so yeah, I would like to hear what you guys think. For me today though, that is gonna wrap things up. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. And like I said, I hope you are happy that this thing is back on the channel. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As I said, for me today, that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures. Stay to